Okay, we are going to talk about a, a one integral. <coughs> this integral that we are looking for, it's an indefinite integral. That means there are no limits within which we have to integrate the function. The, so the function that we are trying to integrate is the following. Integral dx by 1 plus e to the power x. A more formal way of saying this is integral 1 over 1 over 1 plus e to the power x dx. So both of these are equivalent ways of saying the same thing. I mostly prefer the second one. Okay, so here the function that we are trying to integrate is this function f 1 of x is equal to one by one plus e to the power x. So this is a function. First of all, a few observations about the function is that this function is always non-negative. No matter what value x takes, no matter what value the x takes, e to the power x always happens to be non-negative. So therefore, this function is always positive. So when we uh, try working on a problem, we typically try to find some similar problem that we have, that we may have encountered. So here the question is, which one is a similar problem? How do I uh, uh, arrive at some similar problem? Say for instance, um, we play around with the constants or parameters that are in the specific problem. Here we see that there are some constants, like for instance this one. Another constant is this one. And one may say that the coefficient atop e to the power 1 times x, that 1 is also a constant. Okay. Let's not get too ahead of our, too far ahead of ourselves right now. And let's play with this second constant, this, this one. So we are going to construct one new function. One new function and we'll call that f2 of x, where we are going to remove that 1 plus 0 plus e to the power x, and which is nothing but 1 over e to the power x. Okay, so we ask the question that, okay, f2 is formally, that means in form, it is similar to f1. So the question is, uh, maybe the integrals, maybe the integral of f1 integral of f1 dx is quite close to and that is the question is it quite close to integral of f2 dx so that's the question we are trying to answer why are we trying to answer the question so that we can actually find the integral of the original function this function okay <coughs> So now, let us start off with <coughs> So we know that f1 is equal to 1 plus 1 over e to the power x f2 is nothing but 1 over e to the power x dx First easy question Can we integrate f2? Do we know how to integrate f2? That means do we know how to compute this integral f2 dx? Actually, this is just a function, so therefore, there should not be any, yeah, okay. So, do we know how to integrate f2 dx? This, of course, is something that most of us would know, or if we don't know, we can always apply to first principles, and this is nothing but e to the power minus x dx, which is equal to minus of e to the power minus x plus the arbitrary constant c. Whenever you are working with an indefinite integral, there is an arbitrary constant, and that is this constant c. Fine. Okay. So that is uh, what the indefinite integral for this looks like. Now we ask the question, is the indefinite integral of f1 very close to the indefinite integral of f2, which, is, which has a very simple form? And that's the question we want to ask. So in order to answer this question, 
let us look at a couple of plots. Let us try plotting out these functions. Okay. So we are going to plot the functions. So here's one plot. So let's plot the function f2 is equal to 1 over e to the power x. Why, why are we plotting f2 first? Because f2 sort of is the easier function to plot. Okay. So notice that as x becomes very large, if x rushes off to plus infinity, say x is something like 100 or 1000, f2 becomes very very small. e to the power 100 is something in between 2 to the power 100 and 3 to the power 100. So if x becomes very large, f2 becomes very small. On the other hand, if x becomes very small, tends towards minus infinity, then f2 becomes very very large. So you realize that f2 is a sort of decreasing function, it's a monotonically decreasing function and at x is equal to 0, f2, the function f2 takes on the value 1. So let us mark out 1 and this is how f2 sort of looks like. I am not going to be able to go out of the page here so let me try passing through 1 and then going all the way down. So this is what the curve for f2 looks like. Now let us think of what f1 looks like. So as f, for f1 what happens is as x tends towards plus infinity x becomes very large in magnitude. Yes, f1 in the denominator is Differ, uh, differs from f2's denominator only by this quantity 1. So if x becomes very large, f1's denominator also becomes large, just like f2's denominator did. So therefore f1 also tends to 0. f1 also becomes very very small. The main difference that happens is if x becomes very small, like if x tends to minus infinity, f2 tends to plus infinity, but f1 is now trapped. As x tends to minus infinity, yes, e to the power x becomes almost negligible, like some non-negative quantity which is very, very, very close to zero. But there's that one. So therefore, f1 essentially does not become all that small. f1 just becomes, f1 tends to one. So that's something interesting that f1 always lies between 1 and 0. f1 does not ever become unbounded like f2 does. Okay, so let's plot now perhaps in a different color the function f1. Okay, so that's marking out the y is equal to 1 line and this is how f1 looks like. f1 as x is very negative when x is highly negative, f1 looks very, uh, f1 is very close to 1 and then what happens is okay, so this is how f1 looks like. At what point does f1 cross the y-axis? That can be easily found that is at x is equal to 0. At x is equal to 0, f1 is half. So this point is the half point, okay? So right now that's, that's how the plots look like. As you realize, although f1 and f2 formally in form look very similar, the actual plots are quite different. Beyond x is equal to zero, be, uh, in the positive direction, the plots may look roughly similar as in their scale, they are a scaled version of each other, one may think that, but 
below zero, when x is negative, the plots are looking vastly different. Okay. In the next, uh, in the next part, in the next installment, we will proceed from here to see how the integration can be done. Thank you.